What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today I'm gonna show you an awesome little tool. Let me grab it real quick. This little guy right here, the Carly OBD2 app. This thing is awesome. We are in a 2018 BMW M4. However, this can apply to a lot of vehicles. Now some of the functions I'm gonna show you may not just because your car may not have those options. However, if your car has some of these options, uh, we're gonna go over it and we're gonna show you some hidden features that your BMW may have that aren't enabled from the factory. So let's jump into those real quick. Um, this is a really awesome tool. Like I said, all you need is an Android phone or an iPhone, so it works on both. You're gonna need to download the app and you're gonna need to have the adapter here. So let's get into it. First off, we are going to need to find our OBD2 port, which mine is right down here. Which way does it go? Boom, like that. We are now plugged in. Then what we want to do is turn the ignition of the vehicle on. So just hit the button one time. We'll turn off the stereo because we don't need that. Now, if you have an older vehicle like an E36, E30s, it's not gonna work on, all right, guys, because you don't have a OBD2 ECU. But if you have an E36, you're not gonna have that little plug down there, but you may have one of these little guys right here. Now, this is actually gonna go in the engine compartment. This is the diagnostics port. And would you look at that? It gives you an OBD2 connection. So you would just hook up that little adapter to this and you'd be ready to go for some options. So let's jump onto my phone and I'll show you what you gotta do. Okay, so we are going to connect to the app right here using its little running situation. Uh, connection was successful, so that is great. All we gotta hit is okay and go. Now, this is where you're gonna jump into the menu and this is where it's gonna save you a ton of bucks if you have any sort of a diagnostic issue. You know, it could be something simple. It could be a little sensor, something like that that the check engine light's coming up with. Um, you know, you may just wanna replace a coil pack. Coil pack's the number six coil pack that's closest to the end of the hood can sometimes get wet and that can cause you issues and stumbling and you know, misfires and things like that. So if you wanna run a diagnostics on your car, you can do that very quickly. It will actually scan all the ECUs. So you just hit go and you wait for it to do its scan. I'll just show you guys this real quick before we get into some of the coding. I'm gonna have a, probably at least one thing for the like lights. For whatever reason, there's a little fault in the ECU for the interior lights. It says like mismatch type. That's not even an issue actually it doesn't even come up it's it's something that i guess bmw didn't really care about to fix or whatever so uh, it's never been an issue but it just pops up so let's wait for this to do its thing great okay so we can see number of ecus answered we got 26 out of 29 uh number of uh found fault codes is five number of found in the memory is 34 so we're gonna see what we got going on so motor ecu uh, yeah, I did have a misfire apparently at one point in cylinder number two, so I could actually clear that um, You know, we can just select it and we can clear that out. Not a big deal there um, I think I had some kind of crappy gas in the engine uh, memory fault sin buffer full misfiring several cylinders exhaust What is this one? info uh, Exhaust harmful to startup meaning you know, kind of a rich startup, basically. Um, exhaust gas harmful for startup. Hmm, interesting. See, I'm finding some stuff out right now. A mobilizer, ECU. See, here's that wrong interior light thing I was talking about, interior lighting. That's like a standard issue with the body module. No big deal. Audio, uh, PIA, report function, fail. Not quite sure what that one is. Um, other ECUs, two faults failed. Okay, so load, over temperature, and car alarm. I set off my car alarm I, once or twice actually jacking up the car. Um, this car has a, like a tilt sensor on it or something or a shake sensor. So that was actually really cool. So I can select all the faults and I can actually clear these. I can just hit the start clearing. Um, and then we can just clear all these codes. That way, you know, for next time I can check if I need to. And if they come back, they come back. If they don't, great. Now we've kind of, uh, you know, gotten rid of that we've had those issues on there and hopefully they don't come back 
All right, so the fault clearing finished, great. So I'm gonna get out of here. Um, we're just gonna get out of the diagnostics area and I wanna go to something fun. As far as the other options you got, you got diagnostics, used car, that tells you if the car has been tampered with in any way or if it's a good car to buy, you know, it'll show a couple signs of issues that the car may have if you have some mismatched stuff like with the odometer readings and that sort of thing. Coding, that's where we're gonna unlock some of the secret features of the car. Digital garage, that's where it backs up some things. Uh, parameters, that's gonna give you live data logging of the vehicle to your phone with different gauges. That's really neat. iDrive, that one's gonna allow you to unlock the DVD in motion and that sort of thing. So you can actually play DVDs with your car on the screen while driving, um, which we're not gonna recommend to do if that's illegal in your area, but you could do it. You got the service reset, so that's the service reset intervals. So, you know, if you actually need a service or an oil change can actually be done from the car, but the service itself would need to be done from there. The brakes, so this is if you have an electric parking brake, you can put it in the service mode, you can carry out repairs, uh, you can calibrate your parking brake. I'm gonna assume that this might do some stuff with uh, you know, bleeding functions as well. Uh, the transmission here, you can read the status of your transmission, you can read the adaptations of your transmission and all that. Battery set, this is a huge one. Uh, if you put a new battery in your car, you are going to need to register that battery and you can do that by yourself with this app. So that is amazing. This is a diesel particulate filter. If you have a diesel, you may need to mess with that. This is the NOx, NOx catalyst, uh, regenerate your cat NOx catalyst with the press of a button. So that is cool. Exhaust flap. So being that I am in an M4, uh, I do have the exhaust flaps on my exhaust. So I can actually control that with the tap of a button and leave those open while I have the app on. I got the OBD functions here, uh, supported by almost all cars. Uh, we got manuals, which is actually really cool. Uh, you can get a get a little bit more info on your car. Got the adapters, and we got the settings. So what we want to go to is coding. We want to unlock some things, like I was saying. Uh, so let's get into here. This is where you got a bunch of secret items. So we're going to check all the coding possibilities, and this is going to be all the stuff that we can basically unlock on the vehicle. These are those hidden features that BMW may not have enabled. Like, for example, folding mirrors. Um, if your car has comfort touch or, or comfort access, you can do different things with that to where it'll basically roll up the windows or close the sunroof. Not that I have a sunroof, but it will close the sunroof if you need it to. Um, you know, if you have it open in the summertime, you can actually do it from your key fob as well by just pressing down the BMW button on your key fob, which is great. These are a lot of cool little features that you can do. Um, so yeah, let's see what we got. So it's showing that we have 11 compatible ECUs. Now, right in here, it's gonna show us just kind of some basic information here. So CAS stands for comfort functions. Uh, FRM module is lighting and mirrors. Uh, JBBF is windscreen wipers, engine start stop is IHKA, and SM is seating heater. So you can actually control the heat on your seat heaters, which is really cool. Okay, so I know that a ton of you guys obviously hate the freaking, uh, you know, start stop mode, right? Don't we just all hate that uh, when we come up to a light and the car just turns off? I would really enjoy that to be defaulted to off. So now I've already done that in my car. So start an eco, start an eco mode would be this little button right here, right? The auto start stop. So I have that off on my vehicle. I'm gonna get into the dashboard, see what kind of options we have in here. Um, let's just kind of see. You can always revert back to the original coding as well. So don't be scared of that. So digital speedometer, we got it in the off position right now. Correction for speedometer, corrected speed. Um, blank information display on dashboard. This one's kind of cool right here. Uh, the boot logo. So this is a fun one. Uh, boot logo for dashboard. I can make it say M4 GTS, um, which is kind of poser mode but it's also kind of cool. Uh, you know, we can make it say BMW, we can make it say M Performance. Um, so, you know, depending on what car you have here, you can change that. So that's that's kind of neat. You got the date in the dashboard, GPS time correction. So that'll make you go state to state. It'll change your, uh, your actual time on your clock. Cruise control display. 
Um, let's see. Threshold for low range warning. So that's actually when you uh, your little gas tank light goes off. So your little bing. I have it set to 30. So if you want it less, if you feel if you're feeling risky, you can uh, make it much lower, and uh, you can possibly run out of gas sooner. So that is great. Start and stop notification on dashboard on and off. Uh, gear shifter indicator. So I like that. That shows me all the gears that I'm in. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, all that stuff. Gear shift indicator in sport mode. Yes, I like all of these things. Reverse gear gong, so you can turn that on or off. It looks like when you put it into reverse, you can turn that on. Uh, you know, it'll go boom and then tell you you're in reverse. Turn signal for heads up display, entertainment menu in the HUD. Huh, interesting. In the heads up display, you can have an entertainment menu. So that's one that's pretty neat. Cruise control and heads up display. All right, so I'm not really gonna change any of those, but those are some really cool options there. This is the one where you're gonna have the most options here. This is the FEM module. So let's get into this one. Uh, this is where we're gonna have our comfort access stuff. So yeah, these are the ones you're gonna want because every time you use it, you're gonna be like, that's freaking awesome. So start, stop, automatic, default off. We got the start, stop, automatic enabled in eco mode. So that would be, you know, if you're in economic mode, you have that on, you could turn that off if you don't want that to happen. Optical confirmation unlocking vehicle. So that would be your lights would blink when you lock your vehicle. And plus, you know, when you're unlocking the vehicle. Daytime running lights, light switch. You got all those. US side markers. Uh, you can turn those on or off. I actually turn those off. This is the brightness. So you can make them very bright, kind of bright, low, all that stuff. Um, let's see what else we got here. Angel eyes. So now this one's really neat. Uh, this is on the daytime running. So you have to do this on each one. Now I want to say that they're set to medium from default. I actually set mine to very high. So that is going to make your angel eye running lights brighter. Um, I would recommend that you can just click this very high function right there. And uh, yeah, then they'll be a lot brighter. Continue opening, uh, continue window action when door is open. This one's kind of interesting. So like, all right, say I'm rolling the window up because I want out of the car, but then I do that. Well, look at that, my window stops. So if you want, you can make that continue to roll up. So that one's kind of interesting. Uh, welcome lights, I have those off apparently. Um, I don't remember what the welcome lights are. Welcome lights are turned on when your vehicle is unlocked in order to welcome light to work. Light switch on the car also has to be set to auto. So it's really nice here at the bottom. They actually give you like functionality stuff. So keep that on its regular modes. Welcome light, light switch, um, welcome light brightness. I have those set to very high. Welcome light duration. You can have them stay on longer if you would like, which is pretty cool. Now, really, you can just go through here and you can just customize a lot of stuff that you really never knew you could customize and I just think that's so cool because you can unlock so many options. All right, so these are the ones you really want to enable here. This is a uh, comfort folding mirrors for side view mirrors. So if you have this little button right here, that would mean your mirrors can fold in. And when you enable all of these functions in the app here, uh, what it's gonna do is it's going to close or fold those mirrors when you lock the car. So that's really neat. I, I love that feature. It's very, very cool. And then also you have the auto unfold. So I have that turned on, uh, unfold mirrors after comfort close. Yes, I have that on as well. So some other cool features in here as well are basically changing the seat heater temperature. So depending on what level you have, so like if you have it set to like one, two, or three, you can actually change how hot it gets. So like in level one, it's defaulted at 95, you could set it to 100, or you could set it lower to 90 or 84 if you want it a little lower, not to burn your butt off. Uh, in level two, you can actually set it up to 111 or down to 100, or you can go from 117 degrees, you can go all the way up to 127 degrees Fahrenheit or 53 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's pretty freaking hot. So uh, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of a fun one to mess around with. 127 degrees might be pretty dang hot, but if you live in a toasty little area, uh, you may want to do that. So um, this one, this one's Nash, the brake force display. 
flashing brake signal. So that's one I want to do here in a second, but I want to code this other thing first. Um, sometimes it won't allow you to code multiple things at once. So I just recommend kind of coding one thing and uh, checking to make sure that it works and then going back. Um, just sometimes there's too many different coding options and it won't let you. So you kind of have to do one at a time, but no big deal. I like to know that it's gonna work. If you code too many things in there, you're gonna forget what you even did. So uh, let's do this. Uh, this is for the locking. When I lock my car, my mirror should fold. So we will try that one out. I think that that is a, a huge one, actually. That is like a, that's a, that's a big deal in my opinion. I definitely want the car to do that. What I should be able to do is grab my little key fob right here, press it and hold, and everything rolls up and the windows fold down. Now, actually, if you wanna roll the windows all the way up, you have to completely hold this thing. But now, if I unlock the car, boom, my mirrors come off. Another option that's defaulted in these cars, if you guys didn't know or weren't aware, you can press and hold down the unlock button. As soon as you release, it'll actually leave the windows where you release them at. Uh, if you had a sunroof, which I do not, because I got the Edel Carbone Fiber uh, roof on my car, uh, it would also do the sunroof as well. So if you press and hold the unlock button, there you go, you can roll your windows down. If you hit the lock button real quick, it will lock the car and fold the mirrors. And if you want those mirrors up, press and hold the BMW button down until your windows are up. And now your car is all set and all sorts of fancy. That is freaking cool. And that is like one of the number one reasons I recommend this app is because you can't do the locking feature and the folding feature without coding the car. And I just, I just think it's awesome, you know? Every time I do it, I want... I want that to happen. That's some luxury stuff. So the next one I'm gonna show you is a very cool feature for basically helping you not get rear-ended by a car in an emergency braking scenario. Now, if you guys have ever watched F1, you'll kind of see when they get heavy on the brakes, the, uh, the light in the black will blink. Now that is the option we're gonna enable here, which is super cool. But what I wanna do on this is I'm gonna turn to flashing brake signals, and I'm gonna say rear lights. Uh, brake force minimum speed, I'm gonna say three miles an hour. And I am going to hit code now. So we are gonna code that into it'll vehicle. And I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. So I hope you see those results of where the brake lights were flashing. As you can see, if you're under an emergency braking scenario, that's kind of kind of bring some attention to people like what the heck is going on there. If you're ever on the freeway and like traffic stops or that sort of thing, I always like to throw my hazard lights on if I know that the people behind me may not be aware. So, you know, it's just a cool feature to have on your car and it can help you from getting rear-ended. So I definitely recommend to install that little coding option. Thanks a lot for watching my video, guys. If you got to the end, uh, drop a comment down below, you know, if you've used something like this or you have a coding question. Uh, the link down below is an affiliate link, so if you buy through me, I would really appreciate it as I get a couple bucks kickback from this video, and it helps out the channel for doing other videos in the future. As you guys know, or maybe do not know, I do a bunch of install videos on my BMW. This is the F82 2018. I have a 2017 Audi S3 2 E30 has got an 88 and an 86. The 88 is being built into a race car. So if you guys are interested in any of that, please check out my other videos. Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, pick one of these up through the link, and we will talk to you soon. Later and rinch on.